Do you want to be a clinical herbalist? I know that that's something that it takes time on your journey. And for many of us, like myself, you probably get into it and then you realize, you know, what it is that you're doing and how you kind of moved. So for those who don't know what a clinical herbalist is, I always just give my own definition or thinking around things. And so for a clinical herbalist, I think of that as more of the progression. You start maybe at the kitchen herbalist or home herbalist area, then you may go to a community herbalist kind of area. And then when you get more into that professional, this is what you do for a living. You have a practice, whether it's physical or it's online people, you have a hub or a way for people to actually reach you. You have a process and systems. Then that's when I would say you are more of a clinical herbalist. And once you're at that clinical herbalist, you, um, stage area or part of your journey, you'll maybe be working with people who are a bit more advanced or, you know, may have medications and different things out there that you need to be more advanced in and more skilled to be able to work with them. So that's what I'd say a clinical herbalist is. Now, for me, I was kind of thrown into it, like I said, People just always knew me as a tea lady. I love teas. I love tea blends. And so I was always, you know, sharing different products and things that I make. And so sometimes people would ask, you know, for different things. And once they had good results or whatever, they go, a friend is dealing with something like, oh, I know somebody who can help you. And so it kind of began like that word of mouth. But what I noticed was when the person comes back, I need to be able to have their recipe for them to be able to duplicate it, right? And I need to be able to just have a way to keep all the information so I can remember it, but medications or whatever that they may be dealing with. So I needed actual systems. And just me personally, I'm a very organized, you know, I really pride myself on being, you know, professional and things like that. So that's what, what I'm going to be sharing is based on years and years of doing it and creating systems and make sure that everything that I do is well organized, make sure it's efficient, um, and make sure I make, as I do it, I make the process easier for me as I go along, right? And then I've never had an issue with contraindications or anything like that. But I know that that's the big kind of scare that a lot of people have. And I know that it is more common for people to feel just stuck or not even kind of want to work in that area. And so I want to give some kind of tools and guidance in that area so that you can do it and that you don't have to worry about contraindications. And if they happen, you'll know you won't be frazzled, right? You will be confident that you can um, that you can approach it and fix it. Like you can you can work to fix whatever went wrong and help them. And you'll be able to put them at ease. You'll know um, the process of how they should even reach out to you, which I feel like is really important. Now, even in this day and age, as herbalism is taking off a little bit more, this is something that's not talked about. You don't really see books about it or anything like that. And so I wanted to give a deeper dive. This is usually something that, you know, you'll get in a course or whatever. But I want to give a, I want to start by asking some questions Get in your mind to even think, okay, this is something I want to do. What is it going to look like for me? How can I make sure that I have all of everything taken care of and everything that I need so that I can start and not have hiccups? So that's what I'm going to be sharing today. I'm going to be sharing my screen, sharing slides, and sharing a resource. All right. So first, let me go ahead and share the resource, right? So as I said, I have noticed as I've been working with people more, the areas that they struggle. And I always want to give and um, teach and explain things, give worksheets, quizzes or whatever to be able to help them understand and work through it on their own. And so what I found though is there's there is too much to give in one book, one course, you know, and I tried. I tried with Herbal Holistic Healing. It has 540 pages. And what people don't know is I actually had to stop myself. Once I got to 500 pages, I said 500 pages, that's it. We're not doing a 600, 700, 800 page book. Nobody's going to want to read that. Um, some people might say they don't want a 500 page book, but I stopped myself. And I just stopped putting um, anything new in there unless I felt like it had to go in there. And I tried, you know, trimming things down. And so... For that, that book, that textbook, 
literally is a textbook, was to go alongside my course, which is my holistic herbalist course. And, you know, that has so many different videos, um, exercises, um, all different, all different kinds of things, too many to, to go into. But I found that I needed to stop there too. I needed to stop adding things. So then I made the practitioner database, which many of you may um, have heard about. You, sh you should have seen, you know, posts or different things about it or emails if you're on my email list about it. And so I started giving additional resources, additional protocols, and sharing additional things that have to do specifically, hopefully I didn't go out there, that have to do specifically with the clinical side for practitioners. So that's why it's called a practitioner's database. And so now the, the practitioner's database has really expanded to have quite a bit of different protocols. And I really want it to be diverse so that people could see examples of things that they would most likely be dealing with. And not only just herbs, right, but lifestyle changes, maybe food, dealing with client profiles and practice. So I have worksheets, quizzes in there, the protocols, as I said, I also started giving a class replay of my classes that are usually like an hour long, sometimes they're a little bit more on just an organ or just one focus. And so I added those in there. So it's it's so much value and it's like a dollar or so a day, a little bit over a dollar a day. And you're pretty much getting like the class free because my classes are $99 by themselves. So anyway, and it just came to me one day. And I think because I'm transitioning and in my journey and in my business, it came to me, and when I say came to me, I know that always is the Holy Spirit planting a seed and telling me to do something. I I actually, so after I created Herbal Holistic Healing, I'm 30. I knew when I was actually publishing it, I guess I was 29, but um, I knew that, you know, if I do this book when I'm 30, what do I do when I'm 40? So I kind of felt bittersweet about it. I kind of felt like I was never going to be able to top it or I was never going to be able to, you know, when's my next book going to come out, you know, and what's it going to be on? Like, it's, it's just ever going to be at that capacity. And so I had thought about that. And sometimes that can creep up sometimes. And so it was revealed to me by the father that not only would I have another book, right? I would actually have a series. So that's what I'm going to be sharing. The first book in the series there's two completed right now as I'm filming this, and there's more to come. Um, praise ya on this. So it is the Practitioner Database, but this is the book series. And sorry, that's just the light. So this is it, Practitioner Database. And this is specifically providing quality community care. So this is specifically for those who want to become clinical herbalists. This is the first book in the series because this is what you're going to need. And then the other ones are more knowledge as you start working with more clients. Your clientele um, starts expanding the different things that you're working with, the different organs and systems and um, dis diseases, disorders starts expanding. And that's when the collection will explain, expand. So this is book one. And we're going to go through it. As I said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. I'm very excited to have this physical book with me. And this first book is actually added now to our African herbalism course. So that's, you know, really what it's all about. It's all about connecting with our roots, serving our community. That's what the African herbalism course is all about. So if you want to become a clinical herbalist, what are the questions that I have for you? And there's more questions, but here are just four to actually think about. Number one, how will you keep up with all your clients' information? So that's the first thing that I stumbled upon. Like, oh, okay, I actually need a system. I need to be organized. Um, I need a way to store all of this. So that's in that first section of organization. Then also your pre-planning. What is your actual process going to look like from the, the console to the actual finished product, finished result, follow-up, all of that? So let's actually plan what that looks like. What journey are you going to be leading your clients on. You want to know that up first because, you know, you have to have a plan or you won't be able to get to your destination, right? So this is the roadmap, the blueprint of how you plan to connect your services. Then we have inventory management. 
this one part of it is, do you even have enough herbs to be able to serve your community or to be able to serve in that manner, right? To whom much is given, much is required. So um, evaluate how, how thorough is your apothecary. Are you able to, is it, is it concentrated in one area or one focus? Or is it versatile? So that's what, that's what you need to look at. And then the fourth thing is actual client services. So how do you make sure that you don't give a person something that can actually interfere or interact with their medications or their supplements? So let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, so there is how it looks. Inside, we have all different sections that I'm actually going to be breaking down, not all of them, but the, the most integral, I would say. So the first section that we start off with is our client profile practice. So in this section, this is just for you to get hands on, for you to actually practice, get your brain stimulated, and actually see how well versed you are in creating not only just recipes, but actual wellness programs. And so you have space, you have 20 different client profiles. They're all different, female, male, different age, different needs and requirements. Some have medication, some have supplements, some have both. And so you'll have to go through each one. And the goal is to take the specific health concerns, their preferences as well, and their goals. And you're going to make remedies and protocols based on that information. So you're actually doing the work as if you have clients. So a lot of times people are scared to get that first one, two, three, four, five. So you'll feel much more confident if you actually practice and you're like, yeah, I'm actually really good at this. This is my calling. This is something that makes me feel fulfilled. And so it's that uh, practice to get you comfortable, but also to make sure you have clarity about where you are and maybe even see what type of people you want to work with. And so there's all different questions that you want to have once you see each of the each of the profiles that we have. And that's in the very beginning. So that's just to see, is this something that you want to do? And how well and how natural does it come to you? Where do you need to actually study more on, right? So some additional questions. Any recent changes in their diet or lifestyle? Any history of allergies or adverse uh, reactions that they have had? All of that can be useful. Um, the medical history, recent blood, um, blood work results that they have. You want to include suggestions about how they can improve their lifestyle. You want to include at least one custom recipe for them with complete instructions. And I list all the things that your instructions should have because what people don't realize is a lot of times people haven't used herbs at all. And so you need to treat every single client as if it's their first time, walk them through it. You're going to guide them. And so I have three different pillars that I say that we really want to make sure that we as practitioners um, give to our clients. So that's what those first profiles are for. And this is invaluable research that you're doing for your own self. Right. And then the next section that we have and let me go to the book because I did blur just because I know sometimes people are not always honest. <laughs> and so because I'm sharing so much and especially I'm sharing things from my own practice as well, I wanted to make sure that I did kind of have it under wraps a little bit. So we have um, the chapter on herb and drug interactions. And so I have different um, like graphs or charts that you use. And so with this section for each herb, I have how basically I line it out for you, what you want to do. So you want to uncover any potential interactions. You want to assess the overall risk level as well. You want to also look about the practical recommendations that you have. You want to also have all of this beforehand, like I said, and then if something was to happen, okay, this is how we're going to adjust the dosage. This is maybe this is the frequency that they're using it. Maybe we need to change the frequency. Or maybe we need to change the formulation. So you want to have clear guidelines up front and you want to actually let your client know that before they start experiencing something and then they get you know scared or, or worried, whatever. You want to make sure you tell them first so that they're like, okay, they did tell me that this could happen. And so this is what I need to do now. Or they'll also know what to look out for because sometimes people aren't as cognizant of their body 
and you know the way that it speaks and so you want to make sure that you let them know this is maybe a warning not really you know a warning but this is maybe an indication that maybe you want to scale back or so and so we have sections that you want to make sure that you let them know the, the clear guidelines on when they should stop or when they should notify you so like i said i'm giving all of this information so that from the get-go you and your clients are having the best interactions as possible and they have full um, trust in you and you have full trust in yourself because you know that you got all the bases covered we also have our and this these two resources alone like are seriously going to help your practice as you continue to get more and more clients you'll thank yourself for this and this is our medication profile and our supplement profile and you can reuse this and we also have a section uh, but why this is so important is because for each of the different medications you want to basically know all the considerations for it, all of the different um, herbs or whatever that are contraindicated or whatever. And this is going to make it so easy for you because you're going to be able to go back um, to your notes. or so you'll be able to just, you know, print this off and have it very easy. As I said, everything that I do is very systematized. So if I'm doing something, I don't want to have to do it more than once. So I share that. Not just for medications. People don't realize that for supplements, there are contraindications. And so you need to know that. So you will have to do it the first time, but the second, third, fourth time, you already have it. And that'll make it so much easier for you so that you don't have to do so much research each time you're doing uh, a client that has medications or supplements. Okay. We also have about blood sugar and blood pressure monitoring. Those are going to be like the top two things. If you are like me dealing with the black community, you know that our uh, high blood pressure rates and our diabetes rates are through the roof. So that's usually what you'll be dealing with in a lot of cases. And so how do you deal with that? What do you, you know, how are you going to monitor that? We got that covered for you. Great. I hope you guys are getting excited because it makes me excited because this is something that I wish I would have. But I find that there's just such a shortage, but it's like, Yes, it's just like the River Jordan, right? And so it's just an opportunity to create the things that I want to see and to be able to help in, you know, in ways just from all of the way seeing the struggles and wanting to make a positive impact in somebody else's life, right? All right. So that you don't have to take the 10 plus years that took me to get there. That is good. All right. Then we also get, we delve into the client intake. Very important. You want to make sure if you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to get the answers that are important. And just a few pieces of information. Information. And let me, because I know looking at slides can sometimes be boring, boring. But you want to make sure that you're asking the right questions because just a few pieces of information are like a few pieces missing of the puzzle. So you want to make sure that you have a well-rounded wellness program. You want to make sure you have all the things covered and you want to make sure that not only are you relying on the, the client, but also your own knowledge. So you have to have knowledge about the body, which is very important. Um, and so to be able to even ask the right questions or to be able to ask some things that they probably have forgotten. There's so many times when I ask my clients, have you noticed this or have you noticed that? And they're like, oh yeah. Um, so, you know, it's sometimes unless you sit and write beforehand, when you go to see a doctor or when you go to see your herbalist or whatever, you'll, you'll, you'll usually forget things. And so just by knowing about the body, knowing the different patterns and different things that I talk about, I can, you know, gauge what they might have forgotten and ask them that as well. And that, like I said, is just another piece of the puzzle. And you'll be able to help them in ways that is even outside of what they even imagined. Or maybe even what you imagine in its full potential. And so, um, and that's one thing I like to, to let the clients know. What are the changes that they can expect that are not even specific to what they were going through? How their digestion might change or how their skin might change, how their energy levels might change. And that might even, not even be what the focus is. And so you want to make sure you have that. And so that's why I give this section because I'm going to go ahead and show it like this. 
This is why this client intake is important. You want to make sure that you know how to navigate through the conversation. So we have a section in here and it is called the realities of herbal consultations. And in that section is where I also talk about the three different pillars that you want to have and just giving you the expectations up front and you knowing what to expect from your clients and they know what to expect from you is really going to be important. Okay. So we, we tell you all of this, what to expect, what to say before, during the con before the consultation, during the consultation, after how do you follow up, right? The fundamental qualities that you need to have also as a practitioner and that clients should have too. Both of that is really important because this is a collab that you're having. It's a collaborative experience. And so I explain all the different pieces of information, all the different questions that you want to ask. And not only do I give you the questions, of course, you guys know me. I got to give the how and the why, right? So why do you even want to ask these questions? How is this information useful? Of course, we cover that. Right. And then I also give, like I said, I give so much of my actual stuff out there. Um, but I give my actual client form and give you a sample of what it can actually look like. How can you actually get this information? How do you ask these questions or how do you make this form? I share that as well. Then I also give a sample of my own wellness program. So at the time you're seeing this, I've actually stopped doing um, consultations. It's just I've had to kind of trim different areas and it takes a lot of time. As I talked about before with my custom blends, I do one person a day, um, one blend a day for that one person, but I don't even work on it that day. I give a whole day of marinating. So it is time consuming and energy consuming. And so I had to, to um, do that. But this is the system for those who have went through the system or those who want to create their own systems and wellness programs or protocols have whatever one you like to refer to it as, I show you my own. And I tell you, how show you all the things that you want to include in it. And I give you the, the layout, the blueprint of what it look or what it could look like. I don't want people. And, you know, I thought about, should I share this? Because I don't want people to just copy. But what I want people to see is, you know, how do you talk to the client? How do you give them all these recipes and instructions? And how do you how do you structure it? How do you format it? And so I give that there as well. So as you can see, like beforehand, I give them this and I said, there's a lot of information. First, I want you to just take a whole week to actually look through it and make plans, prepare yourself. You can decide to go grocery shopping, clear your pantry of any of the, you know, the foods that you know you shouldn't be eating. Find a friend that's going to hold you accountable, or maybe they can decide, because I've done this many times, like if I'm going on a fast, um, doing it with my mom or doing it with a friend, it could be helpful. So just letting people know, like, you don't need to start this tomorrow. Give yourself grace and time. Give yourself time to actually go shopping and get some of these ingredients. Now, of course, I give them, um, and it depends also on what they order. Like if someone just ordered a custom blend, it would just get that blend. But you can also get like a package with two blends or three blends. But usually with my herbal helper system, you get multiple different things. But for some things, I also give information about food, meal ideas, all of those different things. And not only just everything that you're doing is bad, but also just give substitutions and let people know also what they're doing. That's good. All of that is really important. So that's what you'll find in that section. And the next section that I have is actually really important, but I feel like it's probably going to be underrated. Maybe I could have had a better title for this chapter, but it's the types of diseases and illnesses worksheet. And so what it is, is it actually helps you to distinguish between chronic and acute conditions of the body. And then it also helps you and, and how you actually go about working with them and mitigating these conditions with the dosage will look like, et cetera, et cetera. And then I also go through what physical illnesses look like, chemical or hormonal issues look like, emotional, those different things and break those up. And we give you real life examples. And then of course you'll have your own practice of we'll give you um, a list of some different illnesses and you'll have to identify, okay, is it chronic or acute? 
And then is it physical, chemical, emotional? And it can be, of course, a combination of different things. And so you have to even understand what it is, what type of illness it even is before you can even address it. And so that's what we do there. All right, another thing that we have is the lab results section. And so what I did in this section, let me go ahead and show me. Wrong button. Let me flip to this section. So what I did in this section of the reviewing lab results is not only do I give you the lab results, but I actually explain what each of the different things are or what they, you know. Um, so here's an example. So we have the CBC, the complete blood count. And then I let you know what the hemoglobin actually is, the white blood cell count, um, the platelet count. And then I give you also the ranges. So not only just giving you the numbers, which are very important, so you know what the normal range is. Now, typically when a person does get their results, it will have like that kind of key or whatever that lets you know, okay, this is what the normal or whatever is. But sometimes they, sometimes they may not. Or you just want to also know what you should be looking for as well. So this may be something that you want to brush up on. It's not something that you necessarily have to memorize, but you can have a section that goes through it so you can go to it whenever you're looking like if you want to know what does that actually even mean? Because, you know, sometimes it can just be like the CBC and you might be like, OK, so what is the CBC? So we go through all of that. So very helpful. And then I have also for testing for vitamins and minerals and also explain um, why they're important and the different tests that you will want to take if you want to check on the vitamin D, the B12, different things like that. So it also tells you which actual test it is that you would need to take to be able to check on all of those things. Okay. And sources, really important. All right. All right. So let's go back. Let's see what else I haven't talked about yet. Next, we have a section on right after the lab results. We also have a section on the reproductive hormone levels. So these are the lab results that you want to get if you are looking at hormone issues. So we look at women from 20 to 49. And so some people will say, well, why'd you stop at 49? But you have to realize then at a certain age, women usually go through menopause. And so it's usually that early 50s. And so it's going to be different than you know, what it is during the reproductive ages. Um, so, and it won't be having all of those different changes as well. And so we look at follicle stimulating hormone, which is FSH, uh, luteinizing hormone, LH, and we also do estrogen and progesterone as well. Um, I may have some extra that I didn't mention. I don't know. And then we also do for the males as well, which I didn't mention, but we do for men as well for the same ages, their testosterone, their FSH, and their LH as well. And then I also have a little key there because sometimes, you know, you might not know what it's actually measured in. So I gave a little key of what the actual, what they're actually measuring. So again, just trying to make things so that, you know, you, when you're seeing things, you actually know what those values actually mean. All right, let's see what else. Then we have the education. Very important. Like this is, an, again, very important. Nobody talks about these things, but it's very important. We talk about vitamins and minerals all the time. But why do we not talk about the vitamin and mineral relationship? So just like the organs have relationships, just like I talk about plant families and that's a relationship, right? Our relationship with the, um, the different components of our being mind, body, and spirit, like all of it, systems, organs. I talk about organ systems and ecosystems and all these different things. Vitamins and minerals have a relationship too. And so they, they help to balance one another. Everything, the creator is, the, let me go ahead and, and talk straight to you about this one. The creator, he made everything with a unique design. He made our body so that our bodies could naturally heal itself. So if one thing goes wrong, we're not, it's, it's not dead, deadly or fatal for us all the time. Our body has a way to naturally correct itself. And so that's very important. And there's so many different checks and balances. Like there's so many different things that we do that can put us 
out of alignment. So, and, and, and even those who eat healthy don't even realize that they can be having a buildup of, of so many different vitamins and minerals, but there's so many different checks and balances in the body. Like our liver, like, so let's say if you have such a high output of vitamin A, our liver is able to store several months supply of vitamin A, and it might even be more than months. Um, but that's one of the balances of taking some of this excess. But other vitamins and minerals help to, as I said, balance. So they may help to help aid in absorption, or they may actually inhibit, which could be a good thing in certain instances. We have different organs that balance one another. So we have to understand even these relationships because a person may be like, I don't understand. I'm getting all of these different vitamins. I'm, I'm doing all these different things, but they're not understanding the relationship. They're not understanding that there's a there's a relationship that is fractured somewhere. And so that's why I teach about all of these different things. It's not, it's usually not the easiest on the surface answer, which I know is something that a lot of people don't want to hear, but it's simply true. Okay. So that's why I have a section in here, vitamin and minerals relationships. So as I just explained, explaining which herbs actually help to increase absor absorption and then which ones actually inhibit. So all that's important. We want to make sure that everything is balanced as much as possible. Let's go back. All right. So that, that section, I didn't, um, it's a little blurry, so you can't necessarily see, but you have to understand um, everything is connected. Everything is bigger than us and even than we realize. And then we also have a tincture making checklist. And so this section is actually bigger than what it sounds like and even deeper than what it sounds like. So it's a checklist for making tinctures, but it uh, goes through making using the folk method. And then also for those, once you're working as a clinical herbalist and you wanna make sure that you always have the same exact formula. So make, know that every single bottle has the same amount of herbs that are treated process the same way, like you want to have that systematized uh, formulations. So that's what we go through there of how you actually calculate it. So I give you, like I said, all these different worksheets or whatever that you'll use um, over and over and over again. So it's just invaluable. I'm telling you, this is something that if you are practicing, working with clients, you'll be referring to this all the time. No, it's like I got a little dot in here. But anyway, so... I go through, like I said, the folk method as well. Then I have a list of 50 different herbs and the recommended alcohol by volume. And then what I also did was in parentheses, I let you know about how much water is usually actually in the fresh plant as well. I gave you information on my labeling little system for tinctures, how I like to do it to make sure it's very thorough. Lots of different information in there. And then I'll also give you information about what a commercial product label should look like if you were to sell your products. Okay. So things like, oh, I know about tinctures, whatever. Um, but it's it's much more advanced and easy to reference, which is what I wanted. And then also the inventory checklist. So 150 plants that we already have listed here. And we have uh, some space where you can add different things in here. So what we do is we, we have a key and you can actually categorize all of these different 150 plus herbs that you want to using this uh, system of organization. You will have categories based on the temperature. So when we're looking at the energetics, cold, cool, warm, hot, etc., dry and moist. And then we have the different systems of the body. So you'll be able to see, do you have all the systems covered? And then the organs and tissues that you will want to focus on, the kidneys, the um, liver, gallbladder, uh, the throat, uh, all those different places. Are you sure? Do you have those covered as well? So that's where we're making sure you have a really comprehensive inventory. So the on hand. So whenever someone comes to you, maybe someone doesn't like teas. That's one thing that people forget about is whatever method that you like to use. Maybe it's extracts. Maybe for you, it, maybe you're like me. It's teas. Remember, everyone doesn't like that. So you have to make sure that not only do you have a dry herb ready, but make sure you have multiple different uh, formula types to be able to give to them or knowing how to actually make it quickly for certain things that you can. But things like tinctures, you would need to be have all those things planned. 
So we also have a suggestion of the things that I say that you should always have. My ready to use remedies is in here, how to store herbs. And then I give you a list of what you want to have as a clinical herbalist. And then also for the medicine making part, and then also for the office administration and organization part. Okay. So very, very, MSA, very, very thorough. And then we also have, lastly, so this is our last slide. So I'll go ahead and just show me. And then lastly, you have the different definitions, just breaking out some of the definitions that you may find in the book. So if you've thought about being a clinical herbalist, hopefully you've been taking notes. If not, rewatch um, and leave, leave a like, leave a comment and share with someone who you know would be helpful uh, for. But let me know like, Okay, what are the main things are you, that you're like, oh, I'm so glad you talked about that. I didn't think about that. So if you had any kind of like aha moments, like, oh, I really need to do that. Or maybe you're even practicing already and you're like, oh, I didn't have a system for this in place. Thank you for letting me know that this is something that can be done. What are the aspects? Maybe I wasn't asking certain questions that I need to. Uh, maybe I wasn't um, giving my clients as much information as I needed to do. So let me know what your main takeaways were. And if you're interested in getting your copy of the practitioner database, I will have this information below. Um, if For those who don't know, I did remove my books from Amazon. That was totally me because I was tired of them making more money than me on my own books. So if you want to support this new series if you want to support the mission that we have of empowering herbalists so that they can empower their communities starting this businesses and practices then you can do so be love i uh, also will have another um probably maybe our free ebook or might not be free at that time things are always changing but i'll have an additional resource of a download or something that if you are maybe starting the first steps as herbalist as i have um, the ebook of the common mistakes to get you on the right path of more information that you need to, you know, make changes and tweaks in your practice and in your journey. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope this one was helpful. Look, the, the harvest is plentiful. It's just us, the laborers, which are few and we need you. So if you feel called and you, you know that this is something that you need to do, it's tugging on you. It's something that you need to start Go ahead and start. Go ahead and pick up your copy. I'll give you the whole blueprint, everything that you need so you can be confident and um, get real results for, the, for your community. All right. Bye-bye.